Bug eater. Just got broken up with. I feel like I will never recover from it. My love, this is a great opportunity for you to go get away from the path of emotionally addictive engines to the path of valued actions. So we want to show our brain that you value yourself. So I want you to start now because the brain will go and you cannot tell me because I know it's the case that the brain will be like, no, I have to fix that. We have to fix this and anxiety will come up and you will try to fix the anxiety. You will try to fix the heartbreak. You will try to make feelings feel better. And those are compulsions. What I want you to do is not react on these old trauma patterns. Be comfortable with being uncomfortable, but move on to doing things, things that you value, valued actions. Okay. And mindfully, because if you don't do them mindfully, you're still doing compulsions in your head. You're still trying to figure out, oh, how can I get back with that person? Or how can I recover? Or how can I fix this? Or how can I make these feelings feel better? Maybe a substance can help me, maybe this. And by that, you're still teaching the brain that this is important. The brain just brings these thoughts and these emotions up because it wants to test if this is still important to you. Now, of course, we want to give you some time, but you have to start right away doing the things that you value to show your brain that you value yourself because we don't want to put another person on the pedestal and chasing their validation because then you're showing your brain that you value another person and then the brain gives you more insecurity, more heartbreak because it wants to just support you in chasing the validation of the other person because you show it by your actions that you care about chasing a validation of another person. So we want to show with our actions that this is not important. Even though we feel heartbreak, you will feel hurt and that's normal. Feel hurt, feel heartbreak, feel uncomfortable feelings, have that, but this is not where we stop. We don't just sit there on this couch and have uncomfortable feelings. No. And we don't keep uncomfortable feelings. We don't chase them. They just there. whatever feelings are there. And then we do the actions that we want to grow, that support us, that we want to experience. So it might be physical fitness, it might be going out with your friends, it might be building your business, it might be relaxation, but we have to all do all those actions mindfully because you have to take your brain with you instead of your brain going crazy in all kinds of directions. So let me show you this on the whiteboard. <clears throat> all right. So you just have a breakup. This is your brain and this is you. Remember what I taught you. We don't identify with the brain, but we're going to observe right now what's happening during the breakup. So the feeling of heartbreak comes up, right? The feeling, right? Emotion that comes up plus probably anxiety in the morning plus thoughts but brain brings up thoughts and the problem is most people identify with those thoughts so thoughts like oh how can i make this feeling feel better how can i fix this whatever thoughts come up all these things are so to say to make it easier to understand we're going to call them trauma responses okay so they are trauma responses and they're coming this is your brain right here they come into your brain. Now, if you are trying to make the heartbreak feel better by going on Tinder, going on dates, drinking alcohol, doing whatever, you're still showing the brain that this is important signals to bring up. So the brain will bring up more heartbreak because you're showing that you're reacting to it. The brain doesn't understand language because if it could understand language, you could just tell the brain right now, hey brain, I don't wanna have this heartbreak anymore. I don't have these, I wanna have these emotions anymore. I actually would not like to have thoughts about my ex anymore. And then the brain would be like, oh, sorry, bug eater. Um, I didn't know. You could have told me that a week ago. Uh, I will not give you these thoughts and emotions anymore. But the brain doesn't work like that. And I hope that your therapist has explained that to you. If not, fire your therapist. The brain works in this way. It only cares about what you spent your time on, okay, what actions. So if you do the actions and even you are thinking because you're doing active thinking, 
you are checking about what the boyfriend, his ex-boyfriend is doing, maybe on social media, if you check on stories, if you check in your head how you can fix it, if you try to make heartbreak feel better by scrolling addictively on social media or drinking alcohol, you are showing the brain that this is still dangerous and the brain is like, oh, let me show you more danger because we have to be protected of this danger. So what we want to do is we want to show the brain that all of this is not important. Now, does that mean that the brain just stops giving us heartbreak? No, of course not. Because the brain right now thinks that this is a really bad thing that happened. Because you told the brain that this is the only person, that this is so important. You made up all these stories about that person. That's the only person that fits to you and you need to make these feelings feel better. So the brain is now on alert. It's like, let me give her heartbreak. Let me give her anxiety. Let me give her thoughts of her not being good enough or insecurity so she goes back, so we're not abandoned, right? We want to show the brain that this is not important. So what we have to do is show the brain different behaviors. We have to speak the language of the brain and we can only speak the language of the brain if we change our behaviors. Now this is challenging for a lot of people because most people are on the emotionally addictive engine, which means they're adapting their behaviors based on their emotions. And this will cause more mental health problems, more ADHD, more PB BPD, more trauma, all of those things because you're showing your brain that this is important and you're reacting to emotions and thoughts. And the more you're reacting to emotions and thoughts, the more emotionally weaker you get. Avoiding emotions is like avoiding the gym. You're gonna get weaker. If you don't sweat, if you don't get stronger, you're gonna get weaker, all right? So what we want to do is first step, accepting all the uncomfortable emotions, accepting all the thoughts come up, but we cannot stop there. And if, if anybody tells you, oh, just do shadow work, they're stupid. Don't talk to these people, okay, run. These people have no idea what they're doing. They never changed their brain, okay? I changed my brain so I can explain it easily to you. What you want to do is be okay with the uncomfortable emotion, be okay with the uncomfortable thought, but then the important part is mindfully, and I explain in a second why mindfully is so important, mindfully do valued actions. So ask yourself, and this is for everybody on this live right now who listens, this is the fastest way to improve, is, and this is, I can explain this so easy because most people have the similar values. Let's say you have a value physical fitness. You have a value relaxation. You have a value romantic relationships. You have a value family relationships. You have a value business and money. You have a value of creative expression. What we want to do is actually live our life in a way, we want to live our life in a way that we concentrate on these, to growing these values. And the way how we grow these values is always with actions. We grow physical fitness with actions. We grow our romantic relationships with actions. We grow our family relationships with actions. And if we go on the engine of actions, we actually are speaking the language of our brains. And then we can lead our brains out of trauma land, right? Because the little kid that's in there that got abandoned, that is scared, that been bullied in school, is screaming, no, no, we cannot go into these social anxiety situations anymore. We cannot build our business anymore. We cannot do physical fitness, it's too hard. Please, no, I don't wanna be abandoned again. And now you gotta be the adult and take your little child at the hand and take it to do all those actions with any emotions and thoughts. And that will build emotional fitness. If you wanna learn step-by-step -step how to build emotional fitness, in the link in my bio is the emotional fitness program, a video program where you learn step-by-step -step how to build more emotional fitness so you're not a slave to the brain. And you also see me coaching people through that in that program. So. What we want to do is, and I'll give you an example. So heartbreak, you wake up in the morning, heartbreak is there. And anxiety is there. And thoughts about your ex are there. And you guys, if, even if you don't have anything with your ex, this is the same process with procrastination. This is the same process 
with abandonment issues. This is the same process with depression. This is the same process with anxiety because the brain only works one way. And you should be worried if I switch my story up how the brain works, okay? But you can see tic-tac after tic-tac after tic-tac that I am very congruent in explaining how the brain works, okay? Because I changed it myself from the hardest conditions, like one of the hardest conditions to valued actions. Now I'm only attracted to people who value me and I value them. Before that, I used to be attracted to people based on jealousy, um, toxic games, all of those kind of things because you're attracted based on trauma patterns. So those patterns come up, okay? For you right now, you're waking up, those things come up, okay? If we react to them, we feed them. So if you try to make heartbreak feel better by going on social media and scrolling, you feed them. If you're trying to avoid the thoughts about your ex by going on social media um, scrolling or you guys know I can say it on TikTok or whatever you guys doing, maybe you venting with your girlfriends to try to make feelings feel better. That is called a compulsion. And compulsion is like Mark Freeman says, where you slam your face in the f- slam yourself in the face with a frying pan because compulsions are going to worsen your mental health. So we want to cut out the compulsions. Compulsions are you trying to control these thoughts and emotions. Now, you want to be comfortable being uncomfortable because you having a space for these patterns instead of reacting to them is the first step of showing your brain that you're not reacting to them anymore. Number two, the really, really most important step is now doing valued action. I'll give you an example. Maybe you wake up, you have anxiety, you have all kinds of thoughts, but, and this is where you want to set values beforehand, the night before you said, I'm going to the gym, I'm bettering myself, tomorrow I'm gonna grow, I wanna grow my physical health. Not to get revenge on a person because all those TikTok videos that people put up of like, oh, she broke my heart and now I'm going to the gym and I'm gonna be a beast because of that, that's still a compulsion and that will cause more insecurity because you're doing it because of a person, so you're showing your brain that you value another person still more because you do it to get revenge and then your brain will give you more thoughts and insecurity and you see a lot of people who work out have all kinds of insecurities because they do it to get approval of others. This way you will show your brain that you value other people more because you're showing it by you trying to get likes on social media, you trying to get a new boyfriend, all those kind of things. So what we want to do is we want to do it for ourselves. We want to do it to grow certain things. Now, given if you have relationships, you also do it for other people. You give to other people, but that's still a value of yours. And you do it because you made the choice, not because the brain gives you insecurity. So remember, if the brain gives you insecurities and you try to make those feel better, that is called a compulsion. If you try to control thoughts or emotions, that is called a compulsion. And then you feed those patterns. You feed those trauma patterns, okay? Your therapist should have told you that. If not, fire your therapist. Okay, your therapist, the first thing that your therapist should have ever told you about is cognitive diffusion, okay? And most therapists are really overwhelmingly not practicing mental health tools. They don't know how to change their brain. They don't know how to practice tools to change your brain. They don't know about compulsions because they're learning things in school that are outdated long ago and they're identified with brain patterns. There's a few therapies that I suggest where people do it, but then still you have to make sure that your therapist is practicing mental health tools because then still they could just regurgitate information and then they don't know practically how to help you. Now that's like a tennis coach who only reads tennis books but they, ne- but they never play tennis. How well can they help you if in the first week you're playing and you hold the forehand in a wrong way, but he just read books about it, so he doesn't know, all right? So what we want to do is we want to accept, but not react on it. Accept the uncomfortable emotion, and that's gonna cause emotional fitness. It's like physical fitness. That's great, but we cannot stop there. The next step, and I'll give you an example. Let's say you wake up in the morning, you go to the gym. The next step, is to go to that gym with any emotions, with the thoughts. We cannot control the thoughts coming in, but we can control if we react to them. So the thoughts come, can come in, oh, my ex, and you focus back on the walk on the gym. You focus back on going inside of the gym. You, you, you talk to your brain. Talk out. You can talk out loud. You can be like, hey, brain, no, we, we're here. We're here. We, we're working out. No, we're here. We're running. And the more you do that, you train your brain to be with you, and you show your brain what's important to you. So you go into the gym, mindfully 
and you set your timer for like an hour, hour and a half, and you're not gonna stop going to the gym until that timer goes off. That's how you show your brain that you're the boss. Because if in the middle of the gym you're like, no, I have too much anxiety, I have too much heartbreak, I need to go make my feelings feel better, that's the moment where you make your brain the boss again, and of course then the brain's like, oh, we the boss. We're gonna give her more worries. We're gonna give her more anxiety. We're gonna give her more the things to control the situation. But you wanna show your brain that you're the boss, okay? And by mindfully going to the gym, and the gym is only an example, by the way. You could have just woken up and built your business or go to a fun event, okay? All of, it's not only work. It's also anything that grows your experience, anything that supports you, okay? And of course, this can go deep because we would have to talk about your values and your valued actions. But to simplify it now for now, we want to make it about valued actions and mindfully doing that. Now, if you do that by, with accepting the emotions and thoughts, you are actually not reacting to the old patterns. And over time, you're building emotional fitness. Not only that, but you're showing your brain, oh, the brain's like, oh, you, you actually, I've been giving you heartbreak about your ex. I've been giving you thoughts about your ex. You're not reacting to it. You keep focusing on the gym, building your business, building your Etsy account to put your fluffy animals that you made out there. I don't know what kind of business you guys have, so I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, maybe you have an account, maybe you have a computer business, but you mindfully, and that's why mindfulness is so important. You teach your brain to be bit with you, okay? And when it's with you, it understands, oh, this is what we're doing. And you do it with any emotions and thoughts. And that shows the brain, oh, she's not checking social media anymore, even though I urge her to check his account. She's not checking her thoughts anymore, but she's focusing always back, back. I'm a very efficient organ. I'm not going to give you, bug eater, these heartbreak and emotions and thoughts anymore if you don't react to them. Okay, and this is actually the fastest way over heartbreak. But the most important thing right here is that you're actually doing the things that you value because that way you're showing yourself that you value yourself. And actually over time, which you cannot see now, which is really deep to understand, and most of you will not understand what I'm saying right now, but I just wanna give you like a preview, your brain will change to the point where you're not attracted to the same people anymore because you used to be attracted to people based on emotional addictions. All right. So now you will also be attracted to healthier relationships. Not only that, you will also be more productive because you practice mindfulness, you practice emotional fitness, and you will be more relaxed and calm. You will have more mindfulness, which means you're doing less work in your head because all the other stuff where you're thinking about, oh, I have to worry about work. I have all these conversations with other people in my mind. Um, I worry how I look. Should I wear this? Should I wear that? Is this the right path to go? Is this? All of those thoughts is extra work in your brain, okay? And you're teaching your brain to give you more of those thoughts. That's why you're overwhelmed. That's why you have so much anxiety, all right? Does it make sense, bug eater? I just also wanted to support you because uh, you've been on my lives a lot. Plus, you subscribed, uh, bug eater. So I wanted to give you an in-depth, you're welcome, you got this, by the way, and this is a great opportunity for you. And be kind to yourself because lots of emotions. But remember, have the uncomfortable emotions and do the things that you value. And we want to, if you, I think you have the emotional fitness program, but also if you guys in crazy relationships, I would suggest getting the how to create healthy relationship program because that's where I explain and teach you exactly how to change your path from being emotionally addicted in relationships to trauma patterns to being on the valued actions, doing things that you value and finding yourself and loving yourself. All right. I love that, Bob Eater. We went in depth. We went, we just started this life and we went in depth. Look at me. <laughs> Look at me being, being on here and be like, Yes, and then you do this, you do that. Do you guys know the movies when like the numbers come like at you? Like this is this was me just now. The numbers, <laughs> you know, like the scenes on TikTok when like so, some genius is on the wall and he just sees the numbers. That's me. You gotta imagine me like just seeing the numbers right now and then going on him like X plus Y plus Z is three. <laughs>